Welcome to this uh, fourth edition of the archival series, Indian Mathematicians at Work. Today, it's our great uh, privilege to be able to converse with S.G. Dani, who is a doyen of Indian mathematics. My name is Anish Ghosh. I'm a professor at DIFR and also the current dean of the School of Mathematics. My name is Riddhi Shah. I'm a professor of mathematics at the School of Physical Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. I joined TFR Mumbai Graduate School in Mathematics in 1986. I knew Professor S.G. Dani first as a graduate student and later as a colleague and a collaborator. I have learned a lot of mathematics from him. What impresses me most about Professor Dani is not only his teachings and scholarship, but also his gentleness towards everyone and humility. My work uh, is in a subject called ergodic theory. It's um, the mathematical study of complicated chaotic systems. Dani uh, has been one of the world's foremost leaders in this discipline and has a trailblazing work uh, going across uh, three decades. He's also uh, somewhat uh, uniquely made a significant impact on the study of the history of Indian mathematics. Apart from all of this, Dani has been uh, one of the uh, you know, most successful administrators of mathematics in the country and a scholar and advisor to uh, several generations of students. All in all, he is uh, really one of the most impressive figures in Indian mathematics. And uh, we are delighted to share this opportunity to talk to him with you. Thank you. Hello, Professor Dani. To begin with, can you please tell us something about your childhood, including where you were born? Yeah, uh, I was born in 1947 at a place, Belgaon, uh, which was for, uh, in the earlier uh, Bombay state and uh, under state reorganization in 1956. It's now uh, part of uh, Karnataka, so I can, I can say uh, I am from Karnataka. Uh, my father uh, was in the police department. He was a police jamadar, which is a group leader of a team, which uh, goes into investigations of things, etc. Et so uh, one particular thing is that uh, this was a transferable job, and we had to move places from uh, one place from one place to another after in a period of about three years. Uh, this uh, was until uh, at end, I was about 15 years when uh, he retired. So after that, and even during some of this period, I was at uh, Belgaon. What were your favorite subjects in school and college? Was mathematics one of them? Yeah, the school mathematics I liked. Uh, the, uh, I mean, it was enjoyable. And I also liked the fact that uh, uh, relatives or other people would ask me sums and I would do them and they were kind of amused with, uh, or amu would amuse themselves by asking more such questions and so on. Which was uh, kind of, I mean, uh, uh, the kind of attention I received was something that, that I think I, I must have enjoyed. What were the early influences from teachers, from fellow students, and other personalities which led you to your eventual pursuit of mathematics? Uh, I, I don't know if anything really led me to the pursuit of mathematics, but certainly pursuit of uh, knowledge or uh, science in particular, I think was was an effect because I liked the science subjects. That there are the teachers were good, and uh, in fact, one of one of our teachers uh, used to take extra interest, and we would go assemble at his uh, place to listen to science-related radio programs and uh, things like that. So uh, in that way, sort of, uh, I mean, interest in gathering knowledge was somehow uh, developed. 
I think at a later stage, uh, I mean, at uh, at some point, I was in fact open to doing things like Ayurveda and so on. I mean, <laughs> the whole range of uh, things must have crossed my mind. But at some point, I think the uh, which I could say elaborate on uh, later, perhaps maybe in, uh, on the appropriate context. But uh, one of the figures that I think did uh, make a difference is uh, uh, Professor Jayant Narlikar, who at that time had. Uh, come up with this uh, theory on, on relativity and um, the uh, steady state universe, etc. And uh, there, it was uh, uh, quite a lot in the news, especially in the, this part of, uh, part of India. And uh, that w w would have made some difference, though I, mean, I cannot say that was the, any defining point or something, but uh, it was certainly one of the things that mattered. I heard that you spent first two years of your undergraduate studies at Belgaum. What prompted you to come to Mumbai? Did you come to Mumbai especially to uh, do mathematics? Yeah, actually there is a kind of interesting tale uh, around it. So, uh, I, as I said earlier, my uh, interest in science existed, but in some, some form. But then, uh, I, uh, when I was in the first year of college, the, uh, the the science talent search exams were started. I was, was in fact the first batch, and uh, I mean I had to appear, uh, the write a test, and then go for an interview, which was at the Indian Institute of Science. And uh, so, uh, and luckily, I mean as we would anticipate, I, I got one of those uh, scholarships, and uh, that in some way was I think was the defining uh, moment of my pursuit of science. I mean that sort of uh, earlier my parents would probably ha may not have uh, uh, or may have positively discouraged me from going into doing BSc etc. They might have liked me to do go into engineering or uh, similar uh, professional jobs, but with this thing in hand, I think I, I could readily persuade them that, 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 that this is the thing that, that, that I ought to do. And as a part of the package also came that, uh, I mean, rather than continuing to study in Belgao, it may be better that I move to a better educational center and so on. Though in retrospect, I mean, I could perhaps have more made a more uh, better exploration of what is better. I mean, the first thought from sitting in Belgao for doing better is to go to, to, to Mumbai. That, that's, that, that's how it happened. As I understand, you did undergraduate in physics. So, what? How did you yeah. think uh, of changing as, the subject? As, as I uh, mentioned, so this uh, Jayant Narlikar was, for instance, one of the person. But uh, also, in terms of uh, pursuing knowledge. I don't think at that age we uh, really understood that mathematics was something yet to be explored or something. I mean, mathematics was viewed as something actually complete and I mean, there's nothing to do research in, in that. So when you wanted to do research, it was, it was physics. I mean, the, the, that was the subject of, the, of, uh, of that time. Now, of course, things have shifted, but the emphasis at that time was, uh, and uh, I mean, as I said, I had also this background about uh, tra ancient traditions and so on. So it was the kind of pursuit which was associated with the ancient Rushi Munis and uh, so on. So physics was the thing that I wanted to join. So and uh, I joined the Institute of Science to do physics. So, so going with this uh, ancient tradition. Yeah. So is it a, a tradition in your family that there is a serious study of? No, uh, no, not the family. Scripture? In fact, uh, no, my father was not uh, traditional at all. But perhaps as an antithesis, I actually have became traditional. And uh, I, I had this uh, uh, upanayan and so on, which uh, my, for my father, it was more of a kind of ritual to go through. But I was very serious. I, I wanted to have the sh hair shaved and so on. So, uh, I mean, I, I was more uh, committed in some way than the family itself. Okay, so we'll come back to this theme yeah, later exactly. on. In the... So you did masters in mathematics, and after that, uh, you applied to TIFR for a PhD program. Uh, what led you to up come to TIFR, and how was the process of entry? I, I did physics in uh, Institute of Science, as I said, and. Uh, 
just two years ahead of me, there was uh, another uh, ex-TIFR member, uh, Mangesh Rege. He was also from the Institute of Science and uh, it completed two years earlier than me. Normally, it's only a two-year term that one wouldn't know who are people who are seniors by to you by two years. But there, one of his classmates uh, was serving as demonstrator in the in Institute of Science. So through him, I mean, and there is a kind of group uh, discussions and so on. And uh, uh, Rege, he also had done physics major, and but. Uh, decided to join TIFR for, math, for mathematics, I mean, do, do, do MSc in mathematics and then uh, was to go to TIFR. So that was, uh, he, he was partly responsible in my uh, making the decision that also, that I should also follow that track. Uh, his reasoning was that, uh, well, do, doing physics is a good idea, but whether one can really do it well by joining the, the uh, local uh, options uh, is not clear. And uh, comparatively, relatively, the mathematics department had better reputation and uh, one saw better prospects in, in some so ways. One so. often says of the distinction between physics and mathematics yeah. that more attention to small details and rigor is paid in the latter. No, that, uh, that is if you think only of theoretical physics. I mean, there are the whole lot of, of course, experimental of yes, yes, yes. <laughs> things. <laughs> so, yeah, it's true. But of course, uh, I mean, even in, in physics, my uh, focus wa was coming out on theoretical physics. So if, even if I were to pursue uh, physics, it's likely that I would have done it yes, in, in yes. theoretical physics. And then the argument was that why not then do for mathematics, equip yourself with Correct. mathematics. I mean, and, going and, back to... And uh, then uh, one, could, one can, I mean, the dream or hope was that you, you could uh, uh, do physics on your own in some way. Yeah, of course, our <laughs> but most... of course, it's it's not some. Uh, it, it, I mean, uh, I would strongly say that it's not a possible route. You have to decide between whether you really want to. Yes, yes. Well, I wanted to ask. I mean, our most famous example of this, of course, is Harish Chandra. Our most famous example of this is Harish Chandra, who started yeah, off yeah, trying to understand yeah, 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 yeah. the representations of orthogonal groups but in the physical context. Later stage. Correct, correct. And this, then this, is, this is at, at the beginning. Yes, I mean, yes, yes. I, so I wanted to ask this, did this issue, the fact that there one is a more rigorous study of uh, symmetries, for example, did this play a role in your decision to take mathematics? No, no, I don't think so. And uh, I mean, I, I joined mathematics firstly as because of the example of the reggae. And then about the general belief that mathematics is somehow fundamental to physics and then uh, the possibility of doing physics later after equipping uh, oneself with math 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 mathematics. I, I don't think I went into the philosophical comparisons, etc. At, at, at any point, no. Yeah, uh, then, uh, okay, so uh, the, the, that's how I switched to mathematics and did, I did MSc at uh, the University of Mumbai Department of Mathematics. Uh, Huzur Bazar and Shri Khande were our, one, uh, among our teachers, for instance. And uh, of course, I think uh, it was in the air that if you are good enough, good, I mean, they should, then you should aspire to go to TIFR. I think in, in Bombay, there was enough awareness to, uh, towards that. So accordingly, uh, when an advertisement came, I applied. And uh, uh, then there was the, uh, in those days, actually these days now you have a whole lot big uh, string, a chain of things that hurdles one has to cross. That was not like that at that time. So the, uh, firstly, uh, the graduate school as you have today uh, started only in 1984. In our times, there was no graduate school. Uh, we joined as uh, what they called research assistants and people uh, people outside usually wondered what assistance one has to give but that was only a name actually it was research assist uh, the uh, uh, studentships were as, uh, advertised as uh, admission for research assistantships and we applied for that and then uh, there was no written test or anything there was one uh, interview it, I mean, people say, uh, I think based on scores, etc., marks, etc., they made a short listing and called people for interviews and uh, I had uh, this interview. 
In fact, uh, the uh, interesting thing is that there, there is only the application, but at the, 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 at the interview, this uh, Professor Narsimhan was uh, uh, the chair of the committee. So at the end of the, end of the uh, interview, he said, what is this application you have made? You have no recommendations, nothing. Why, how did you expect us to uh, call you for interview? So of course I was quite sheepishly looked at. I, I didn't know uh, what to do, but, uh, but somehow they uh, they did decide to call <laughs> call me for interview, and they did select me. So that 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 was uh, good. But uh, I may uh, go back and say that uh, other than this interview, my interview for the science star and search and uh, scholarship was in fact in some way I view as uh, more. Uh, kind of uh, uh, hallmark in, or, or something important, Pivotal, important, yeah. important step. Pivotal. So uh, the Science and Search Scholarship had uh, had a written test and then the screen people and then there was the interview as I mentioned it was at the Institute of Science in Bangalore. Uh, I don't know the who the people were in the committee but they were uh, I think it was the first time and they must have been a fairly established mathematicians and so on, established scientists. Uh, so uh, it's a. I mean, somehow in the course of the they asked me questions, and somehow in the course of the uh, interview, I happened to uh, mention Fermat and Euler and uh, Gauss, and, so on. <laughs> uh, and and then they promptly corrected me. You should say Fermat, Euler, uh, Gauss, and so on. So it was. Uh, I mean, kind of re uh, revealing the, 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 uh, the sort of commenting on the ignorance on the one part, and on the other hand, uh, it sort of showed how much they cared for uh, the, uh, the these aspect, uh, the uh, kind of knowledge that, that one acquires outside the curriculum, etc. So it it could it could possibly have been the. Uh, one of the main factors which brought me the scholarship in the first, in the first place. So yeah, so they, these two, uh, the, the first uh, science science search interview and the TIFR interview, I think uh, kind of defined my uh, going into math, scientist and mathematics in particular, yeah, at the second stage. Great, so um, now we're at the stage where you've entered TIFR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, my question now is uh, how you chose your area of study. How I chose my area of study? Yeah, so you're uh, a leader in ergodic theory, what uh, pointed you in yeah. that direction? Uh, now maybe I'll, let me begin to by saying a few things about the uh, atmosphere there here at, the, at that time. First of all, we were not uh, recruited as graduate students, we were recruited as research assistants. And the general thing in the area, was uh, the aim was not to do a PhD, but to, to uh, learn mathematics, do research and to become mathematicians and so on. So there's a certain uh, emphasis on uh, independent learning, learning as well. Uh, the uh, atmosphere. I mean, the, I think it was um, uh, the one of the uh, uh, the, the uh, atmosphere was very vibrant. I mean, we used to have uh, discussions all around. I mean, there, there used to be. So, just to draw that out, uh, uh, is it the fact that you were not treated as students but as colleagues? Pardon? Is it the fact that you are not treated as a student but as a colleague, mathematician? Yeah. That's it made a lot of difference lot in, of in our uh, mental framework. I mean, and then there used to be free discussions in the corridors, in the canteen, and uh, so on. I mean, canteen table. Uh, I remember once, uh, for instance, Raghunathan was there and there were various other people in this. And in the course of that session, within a span of a, maybe a few minutes, Raghunathan was answering questions on a variety of topics, at least three <laughs> uh, would, would have happened. And uh, the canteen discussions would, would, I mean, canteen served more or less, in, in fact, as a supplementary place for discussions and so on, which is, and uh, one got to hear not only what you are pursuing, but also other, other, other things and so on. So then uh, the choice of uh, ergodic theory, that is how, how did I come to? Okay, that the story there is that uh, at that time, uh, Mosto 
had used ergodic uh, ergodic state results in the rigidity theorem, and which is something which is very uh, very close to Raghunathan and your, okay. so Raghunathan had the idea that uh, uh, that that area needs should be pursued. So and then there was also the paper of Calvin Moore on uh, er, uh, flows on hom ergodic ergodicity of flows on homogeneous spaces or something. So. Uh, and again, at that time, there was no issue thing about uh, that he is going to be my teacher and you are registered with him, etc. It's not like that. Uh, before actually I got uh, involved with him, uh, we had I had a paper written, uh, I mean joint paper with uh, Jotsna, my wife, uh, on uh, orbits of discrete groups, etc. Et and that was that was done with uh, under under the uh, advice of Professor Raghavan, who was here. But then, uh, and when this happened, Rag Raghunathan was not uh, in the country for some reason. I don't remember precisely where he was. And when he came back, I mean, he had this idea that ergodic theory has to be pursued. So he came to me and uh, brought uh, cop um, the copy of uh, Calvin Moore's paper. And you should study this. And so uh, I, I did, and then I gave a seminar on the, on the paper. And so it got started. That itself may not have uh, led me going to uh, ergodic theory as such directly because that was a limited kind of, I mean, one particular theorem, then you, you might tend to apply it to uh, other things, etc. But at that time, there was also, also uh, I, I mean, it introduced me to the uh, book of Halmos, ergodic theory of Halmos, and then there was also a little book of by Smorodinsky. I mean, there is a book of Smorodinsky. So these two, uh, I mean, Halmos, of course, uh, only the, for the classical part, but uh, the uh, Smorodinsky's book introduced me to the Kolmogorov of automorphisms and uh, so on. And so in research, I, mean, I, I, I would say sometimes it strikes you that some, something there is something that you can do about uh, these things here. So putting um, Calvin Moore's paper in one, one, one side, and the uh, notion of Kolmogorov automorphisms in the other side. So there is the question of uh, the ergodic, these ergodic transformations you want to understand when they are Kolmogorov. And uh, so that's how my thesis evolved. So in a way, uh, there was a sort of uh, free learning process got me into that. And then that became my research topic for PhD. So it's not, not the other way that I didn't decide on a PhD topic. Right, and, and, and either way <laughs> you given a topic. Pardon? Neither were you given a topic, my <laughs> your advisor. Yeah, 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 right. That's a very fascinating because now the structure, it's the program is very structured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As uh, I guess it, it's uh, a right. necessity now, we can't. So, do some of the freedom that we enjoyed was something somewhere very useful. Of course, uh, I mean, it's not to say that ne that's necessarily a superior system or something. I mean, correct, I'm not correct, arguing correct. that it has its pitfalls, but at least in my case, certainly it worked in so favor. So I, I have a, a personal feeling that that system works better for more talented students. Yeah, yeah that's possible. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> certainly it worked for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so if you want to cater to the uh, right. everyone, you have to. You need to need. Uh, Balance checks and balances or something. Then yes, yes, for, yes. A, for that Which you need a naturally yeah. curtail some freedom. Right, I, I agree. I'm, I'm yeah. not. That's great. So then we come to uh, uh, so, uh, what I would like to call some sort of golden era in ergodic theory which prominently involves you. Yeah. And this is the study of um, flows on homogeneous spaces. And so maybe we can start with your famous work on the horocycle flow. So uh, after doing PhD on uh, the Kolmogorov uh, automorphisms and uh, related thing, so I was scouting for, I mean, and then the, uh, unlike now, uh, you had no, there was not the next step of joining institute, etc. I was already a part of the institute. And uh, so I was scouting for uh, new directions, new problems, and one of the, uh, natural thing question uh, naturally struck is uh, uh, in ergodicity, uh, ergodic theorems, etc. There's only something for almost everywhere, and then really it sort of bothersome. I mean, you don't, you, it, 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 you know, that on the whole it's true, but can you cannot really pin down? Is, is it true for this? So that that's that sort of. Uh, so maybe if you don't mind, we can flesh out this point a little bit. 
yeah. which is that ergodic theory is a, the study of a long-term behavior of very chaotic systems. Yeah. So since it's not possible to predict when it's going to exactly rain, what one tries to do is develop long-term forecasting. And no, I, probabilistic I, I would, I would, uh, uh, I would modify that. I mean, it, it, the, the, that's the way the subject has developed. But Correct. the main point is, uh, the techniques that are involved uh, sort of force it that you can you can say what is happening. I mean, because you are looking at us, the, what happens in the long run, yes. you, are, you can also say only about on the whole, Correct. not Correct. not for each initial initial exactly. condition. So the philosophy seems to, is that. Yeah. You can, it's a very complicated system, so we can say something with a high degree of accuracy, but yeah. not definitively. Yeah, right. And right. that is what was bothering you. Right. Yeah, that, that's what is uh, sort of, one feels inadequate. And at least one would like to know whether, at least for some systems, that you, you can understand better. And then, uh, the, the, before uh, going into my uniform distribution, etc., there, there was also the... Uh, work on the horospherical flows, yes. where uh, first of all, Veach and uh, there was also other papers by Bowen and so on, where, which I could uh, extend to the non-compact situation, yes. the non-uniform. The, the, so there are two types of homogeneous spaces, as you, you would all know, the, those which are compact and those which have a kind of cusp. Uh, when one can go to infinity in a certain limited way, so and then uh, for uh, practical uh, purposes of arithmetic, it is important that uh, you uh, deal with the non-compact situations, yes, yes. Uh, which I managed to do in, in the for the horospherical subgroups in the first instance, yes. and that gradually led to the question of uh, defining it at least in the particular case. So the uh, that's how my uh, a paper on uh, this uh, uniform distribution of uh, orbits of uh, horocycle flows uh, that came. So I must say that the, there was a major motivating factor there as a, pa a paper of uh, Furstenberg, yes. right? For, yes. for uh, in the, again in the case where the lattice, uh, the associated lattice is uniform, uh, Furstenberg had the result, and yes. uh, then. Uh, then uh, uh, tried to see how one can extend that to the general case, and uh, we did that. I did. I initially I did this for only for the particular case of SL two Z. Of course, that's it. in some ways it's an important it's case, but it was case. also important to extend it to more general situations. And then that I did jointly with uh, John Smiley. Correct. So correct, they correct. did these. So I just want to get a sense of uh, the atmosphere at the time because the names that you mentioned, and I should say this for the audience like Fustenberg and Veach and Dani and Smiley, each of these people at the time this conversation is happening were young mathematicians, all of whom later on became world-leading figures in this subject. Fustenberg, of course, went on to famously win the Abel Prize, and Dani himself has won a host of important prizes. So this subject clearly had something going for it because a lot of very, very smart young people... A lot of? A very smart young mathematicians were drawn to it. Well, Furstenberg was not quite young. I mean, he was uh, still a, a <laughs> right, right. <laughs> fairly yes. ahead. But uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Margulis, I would say, he was young, but correct, <laughs> still. Correct. Margulis has not yet entered. Uh, <laughs> not, yet en not yet entered this <laughs> realm. Yeah, yes, right. Yes. So uh, by the time you proved this horospherical result, which was a very important result, were you starting to develop the feeling that this is going to be a general phenomenon already? Difficult to say. I mean, see, the uh, one of the driving uh, forces or motivating factors was this conjecture of Raghunathan, which uh, I which I publicized in some way. I mean, Raghunathan, uh, and that actually, uh, so uh, at some stage, I was looking when I was still exploring problems before this was even before the uniform distribution results. So when I uh, just casually talking to him about uh, future, I mean possible problems and so on, and then at that time there was we have uh, there was uh, a, at the institute there was a lot of uh, general talk about uh, the Oppenheim conjecture. 
Yeah, which is actually one of the, the things that led to the subsequent development in homogeneous uh, dynamics. Now, Oppenheim conjecture, in fact, uh, K.J. Ramanathan and Raghavan had, uh, had written a paper in the, in the 70, but that not quite on the uh, classical Oppenheim conjecture in the integer case, but the uh, analog of that in the for algebraic num numbers. Right. But I mean, because of that, it it, it was something of a, of a problem that uh, one aspired to do something with, uh, to solve, or maybe at least contribute something. And uh, so, Raghunathan, uh, after some of our papers came up, and then Jyotsna's thesis uh, came uh, with that, he it occurred to him that uh, that would be solved if the uh, now in slightly going slightly technical if uh, one could see that the orbits of unipotent uh, one parameter subgroups if they are homogeneous then the conjecture would be solved the, the, so if you don't mind can i give a brief interjection to explain the question yeah so the question uh, if uh, the audience might be aware of uh, the famous fermat's last year which says that you can solve an integer equality, like x plus y equal to z, or x squared plus y squared equal to z squared, but not in fact x cubed plus y cubed equal to z cubed. We know how to solve it in real numbers, but we can't find integer solutions to this. What Professor Dani is mentioning is a very famous problem which replaces an equality by an inequality. So now you have a, a an inequality of the form, for instance, x squared minus pi times y squared plus z squared is, uh, say, less than a half. And can you find three integers, like 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, and 7, which can solve this? So this was a problem posed by a famous British mathematician called Alexander Oppenheim, who had a very interesting career himself. He then went on to become the founding vice chancellor of the National University of Singapore. This problem remained open for a very long time till Raghunathan made a pivotal observation right here in this institute, which connected this to the dynamics of the symmetries of the inequality. And Professor Dani at that time was a specialist in studying especially these symmetries. Please go on. Yeah. That's a very interesting connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting connection, and uh, so uh, the, this was part of an informal chat. Raghunathan had not had not pursued the uh, thing, but uh, which uh, I took up, and th these are these are some of the results which are in the in the uh, towards what the dynamical analog would be. That's, so the, uh, the uh, study of the horocycle flow. And, Correct. So that's a great, beautiful yeah, thing. There's a very right. complicated problem. Yeah. And you're setting up another complicated problem in a different universe. Right, in a different viewpoint for a completely it. different viewpoint, solving that and then carrying it back. Right, right. So that that was the general scheme, and I was uh, work, uh, working on it several years, I, I, I believe. But in the meantime, the Margulis, who had, in fact, he was inspired, I think, by uh, the mention of Raghunathan's conjecture in one of my papers, was able to apply this strategy and uh, do settle the Oppenheim conjecture that this was true. So, what we had to prove that uh, for the uh, certain, you need to take the uh, case of three cross three matrices, and there's a corresponding homogeneous space there, and there is a flow the unimportant flow in that, uh, the study, study that, and with that actually one had to do a, a little more work, but basically at a, at a, at an, at a level which uh, any graduate student can understand, uh, he uh, into, found a proof of the, uh, of, a, of the dynamical question and then could apply to, to settle the Oppenheim conjecture. So that was, uh, that was very, a very, Major development which was uh, responsible for the for homogeneous dynamics right, right, right. and to bring in to light uh, some of the uh, results that we had uh, uh, proved. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, just to, this is also not a mathematical question, but you know, our audience today, uh, many of whom are you know born and brought up in the internet age, 
uh, would like to know how did you hear about Margulis's results? Did you get a paper? Was it a letter? No. Uh, actually, Margulis was well known. He uh, at, uh, got, got the Fields Medal in 1978, which was well before uh, yes. some of the things that we are talking about. And uh, at some, in fact, uh, after the Fields Medal work, I mean, he was looking for new areas, and it, this served as well. <laughs> as well, that's very so, fortunate. Uh, it is very uh, fortunate and opportune in, in that way. And so, uh, my first uh, kind of connection, so to speak, uh, in some way, is uh, with Margolis. Is when he sent me a gift. And this happened, there was a conference in Oslo to which Raghunathan had uh, gone and uh, Margulis sent a, a little Russian uh, object and, uh, as, a, as a gift. It was kind of, uh, I mean, it, it is something that, that I cherish. So, and that, that was of course an isolated thing and in the meanwhile, he, uh, I also got a, a preprint of his paper on which we had some seminar and talks here, which I, I worked out the details and so on. So, uh, and, you know, of course, there was uh, anticipation that somehow I should uh, work with him. And uh, that fortunately happened. And the, the thing was, so earlier, of course, the, as a Jewish mathematician, the Soviet Union, they didn't have much of an opportunity to travel, but it, it turned out that uh, things relaxed in the uh, second half of the 80s and then he was able to uh, visit uh, the Max Planck Institute in Bonn, uh, hosted by uh, Gunther Harder. And he arranged with uh, Harder to uh, uh, get me invited at, at the same time as uh, uh, while he was here, uh, he was there. And uh, that's how uh, the connection started. Before that, we didn't really have, I don't think we had any, uh, I mean, there are of course no email at that time. Yes. But uh, we, there we was no have, correspondence either. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we didn't, and I don't think we had any postal exchange either, except other than he's sending the reprint, and I'm not even sure if I sent an acknowledgement or not. But uh, that, uh, so uh, our first uh, um, direct contact was was physical and at, at Bonn Max Planck Institute. And though I was kind of completely overwhelmed by the weight of the situation that I was meeting with this uh, famous person and Fields medalist and also direct and, and something on which, I mean, the, the Oppenheim conjecture was solved. and. So, uh, and in the very first meeting, it turned out, uh, very first, or I mean, early meetings, it turned out that at that time I had some results that on these minimal sets, which uh, I mentioned to him, and it turned out that we, we, with the help of uh, these other observations I had made, we could uh, improve upon the results for uh, on, on the Oppenheim uh, conjecture. In the Oppenheim conjecture, one concentrates only on getting integer solutions, but it's all, it would be important to know whether you get primitive solutions, and that came out of uh, our, that, uh, our first joint paper at, at that time. So uh, that, that's how my uh, first initial contact, then of course, uh, there are several later, I don't know if you would like me to talk about it now. Yes, or yes. Maybe, at a later maybe I'll just uh, pause briefly yeah. to uh, ask about another beautiful paper that you wrote around this time, which is your most cited paper on divergent trajectories. Well, actually, uh, that is, in some sense, uh, my idea, uh, I mean, not just some, it, it, uh, fact, as a matter of fact, uh, the, uh, it is pre-Margolis area. It's, yes, got it. uh, This is something uh, that happened when, uh, I, uh, in 1983-84, I was at the Institute for Advanced Study for for uh, for a year for the academic year, and uh, I was looking at uh, certain things in number theory and the uh, book of Cassels and the, the singular forms and things. Like that. I mean, more out of curiosity, and then it struck me that uh, much of a lot, good deal of this has has some similarities within the in the dynamics. I mean, so that that's where uh, and. Uh, I should also mention uh, some discussion I had with the uh, Bombieri, 
uh, who clarified some things, some things for me. But basically, uh, it it was it was it was that was the time when I realized the connection between the uh, the connection. In a in a sense, it was there. It just it had to be uh, to be sort of brought into focus. So because the I mean the main thing there is the Mahler criterion uh, yeah. as you as you know. Yeah. But to apply it in in this way to the Diophantine approximation situation is uh, something that occurred to me at that time, and that's where uh, this paper on yeah, that, divergent that's, trajectories. It's a, a beautiful you know, paper. Somehow that that has uh, the, the maximum citation for. It. Yeah, it's the most. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most yeah. influential yeah, paper right. because of yeah. the and explosion more, in activity around yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, in in a way, it sort of gave a uh, direction or philosophy for pursuing things. Yes. But uh, apart from other than my own contribution, I think uh, the role of Margolis is quite important in that. I mean, the fact that he followed it up, yes, uh, together with Kleinberg, with Kleinberg. Uh, is sort of more uh, I mean, the driving force of <laughs> that rather than. But certainly, I mean, I had the sort of privilege of uh, uh, introducing that. That you had the privilege of being first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Vidhi, would you like to take some? Yeah. So, in the 80s, you started working in uh, the area of probability measures on groups. And yeah. that led to a very fruitful collaboration with uh, Mick McCrudden from yeah. University of Manchester. How did you get interested in this field? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's kind of interesting because um, interesting coincidence, I should say. See, uh, in the uh, after this eighties, mid the mid eighties, so, and this was before I really got into the uh, collaboration with Margolis. So I was looking for uh, possible visits and things like that, and I just happened to uh, write to uh, Professor Kolzov at Erlangen that uh, I would be interested in visiting Germany. Wherever. And then uh, there was initially no reply to the letter. I mean, this was all correspondence. Were, but suddenly one day I got a phone call from him from Germany, which was a very very unusual thing for in those days to get a call from Germany and, uh, and so on. And then he said uh, he uh, can invite me for a semester, a quarter or semester, whatever, whatever. And uh, the, that would provide local hospitality, but in, to arrange for travel, uh, something would have to be done, and he told me that if you agree to attend two conferences, then he should be able to get uh, German grants for for travel. So then uh, I said, I don't know about conferences, and, and then he took upon himself to find some suitable conferences, uh, and uh, actually it turned out that finally only one, but I think he could ne negotiate that one is enough in this case, or so. So finally. Uh, I, in that context, so, uh, along with the visit to Erlangen, uh, I visited, uh, I went to Oberorfach for a conference, and this was in probability theory on groups. Okay, this is a, is a very famous series of uh, Oberorfach conferences by uh, Doyen of this area called the Her Herbert Heyer. And this was one of, one of the conferences, and uh, so at uh, Kolsov's instance, Hire sent me an invitation. I went there, and that's where I first met Macrudan. And Macrudan is a is an interesting person. So, uh, uh, in in his talk, of course, the talk was uh, on a certain technical problem, which maybe we'll talk about later. But uh, I interjected about about something, and uh, the, he. I mean, he is a kind of strong-minded person, and then he sort of seemed to. Uh, I mean, I felt that he was making fun of my <laughs> my comment, so I, I, I was committed to 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 to, do, to make some something to tell him something that I I, I can uh, uh, show, and it turned out that I could we could uh, uh, make progress with with the problem that he was discussing and that that was our first uh, joint paper it's something relatively small result actually uh, so for the uh, conference but that's how uh, our uh, collaboration started and uh, actually herbert hire 
who was kind of witness to all of his, uh, some of these exchanges, etc., apparently asked, uh, Makrodon, is Dani bothering you? And, uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, this Makrodon told me later when subsequently our uh, more important papers in that, they were actually uh, reviewed by Hire for uh, Matsinet. And he is very profusely uh, uh, commenting on the merits of that and so on. So uh, when we were talking, I mean, he, when uh, that came up, McCrudden told me that at one time <laughs> he was asking you. That, that problem, I mean, uh, like the Oppenheim conjecture, for instance, in another area, that, that is something, uh, it, 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 philosophically it means the it's, it's the following. So you have... Uh, uh, you, you, ha you have a certain system you, uh, you, and suppose you, you know that it has roots of all orders. Then does it mean you can, does it mean it's something of a part of a continuous process? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the situation. No, 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 of course, one has to go in the problem is in a very specific situation. You have a, uh, you have a pro group as the space and there, there's transformations happening, happening there and uh, random. So, uh, and... Uh, that uh, I think stayed with us for, I mean, Macrudan was more or less uh, committed all through his life for uh, to that. And he used to joke that he would like uh, the epitaph on his, uh, uh, I mean, after his, I mean, in, on the tomb, whatever, that uh, uh, man is, um, uh, uh, Macrudan is embedded here, the, embed is the embedding <laughs> problem. <laughs> so, uh, Okay, so that, that's uh, that's a digression. So, but this embedding problem stayed with us for a long time and, and made a good deal of progress, but uh, not uh, it's not completely settled yet. I mean, eventually, of course, Riddhi also got into that uh, and so on. We have later joint work along with Kevarsh with that, but uh, on the whole, uh, the I mean, uh, it's uh, almost satisfactory, but not fully satisfactory. There's a situation that that's how. Uh, so let me take you back a little, uh, going back to this famous Krella paper on divergent trajectories. From? Divergent trajectories. Divergent trajectories. Um, you said that uh, it, it is, it really, uh, you know, was, uh, it caused a lot of uh, future further development. But another of your papers, which was instrumental for Kleinbach and Margulis, was your quantifying of Margulis's non-divergence estimate. Yeah. So, what was the what uh, brought you to that problem? Quantification. My the quantification, in fact, that came, that came to me as a as a need actually. So, in my earlier paper on the uh, classification of invariant measures on for horospherical flows. flows. Uh, so, there's a certain step where you need to know that. Uh, Total measure is so we are taking the uh, asymptotics, yeah. and you need to know that the, the things are not going to zero, which would Correct. happen if the, the yeah. measure is uh, invariant. And uh, for for that, I needed to show that these measures are finite. And for for that, I need uh, in the course of that, I needed uh, the stronger form of uh, uh, Margulis lemma, Correct. which he had proved for the uh, arithmeticity results. Yeah. And it turned out a uh, very uh, fortunate coincidence is that uh, this was after my years at, uh, at Yale. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Kakutani had given a very nice, a very beautiful course of lectures on ergodic theory and that had stuck in my mind. So to, to get the averages right, what you had to do. So in, the, and, uh, so in terms of that, I, I knew that what one, one uh, improvement that is needed in Margolis lemma. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. That's how my quantitative uh, uh, results. They came. I see, I see. Yeah. And so these, of course, have also proved influential in later developments yeah, in yeah, Ratner's yeah. work yeah. and everything yeah, that yeah. follows. Yeah. Not to uh, mention yeah. the Kleinbach Margulis. Uh, again, machine. I should say it was Margulis who sort of brought it more to light. And in <laughs> fact, called it property D. And people, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, I'm sure the people in the area knew what D, uh, D stood for. So. Yes, yes, yeah. of course. And so we can now progress to another of your famous papers with Margulis, where you introduced linearization. Yeah. So can you tell us something about? Uh, well, this has proved to be. Uh, uh, a piece of technology which has had lasting impact? Uh, linearization, uh, 
Actually, you know, in the collaboration at Margulies, usually he had uh, he had ideas, and then he would he would sort of uh, wave his hands and somehow try to convey that that that's the true that the situation. And sometimes they, they, they it was quite difficult to understand. Uh, uh, so I, to understand that, I needed something which put things on ground. So that's where I uh, brought it to linearization. I see, so, I uh, and uh, the, if one needs to do it formally without without right, uh, correct, so correct, correct. I realized that you need need uh, uh, this kind of kind of technique, and it turned out again that something like that had uh, was involved in my uh, earlier paper in this uh, uh, ergodic theory dynamical systems, and in some way the scheme goes back also to. Uh, uh, work with John, John Smiley and so on. So the, the, those were, of course, uh, toy cases. Mm -hmm. So it was only SL two R. So so from that, with a pro proper in a pro viewing it in a certain proper way, uh, the idea of linearization uh, uh, evolved out of that. So it was sort of more of my need to. Uh, Get concrete uh, models for con uh, for uh, things which for in for uh, Margulis when the realm of ideas which which he could see <laughs> without <laughs> these, th these things. So uh, you have worked in many diverse areas uh, like one hand ergodic theory, then probability sum groups. There are also very interesting and useful results on structure of Lie groups, automorphism groups. Uh, the audience may like to know how you find research problems in different areas and how do you solve them? See, uh, one thing I should uh, begin with is the unlike in experimental contexts or, uh, or applied research in pure mathematics or at least pure mathematics of the kind that many of uh, uh, I and many others indulge in, it's not that you are after one particular project. It's, I mean, it, it, that's not how you, you just know various things and various things where what they are lacking and how they need to be improved and, and uh, so on. And it just, I mean, you keep, keep your eyes open and sometimes you see patterns like, for instance, when I, the uh, di divergence thing, the, the, that uh, the, the, there's these results in number theory and then there are these results that there must be something common that you realize. And then uh, you begin to think about it and uh, I mean, it may not be a continuous process that, uh, uh, that, that I mean, you might uh, think up to some stage and uh, think it's not enough and leave it. Later on, something else comes through that contrib corroborates with that, and then you uh, realize that you, the, which is this is how you should go go further with that, and that, that, that that's how it sort of builds up. So the uh, the uh, research in my case, at least, I mean, cer certain things are done in project mode, but. The main important things were got done not in project mode, but in realizing that there are a sort, sort of in some sort of some sort of revelation that comes through, and for that you just have to keep your mind open. That's very valuable advice. <laughs> so uh, I'll uh, just briefly talk about another major personality in this. I'll talk a little bit about mm -hmm. ask you about another major personality, yeah. which is Marina Ratner. So when did you first hear of her, and when did you meet her? It was in the, uh, it was 1981-82 that uh, I had an invitation to Berkeley, and uh, University of California, Berkeley. And uh, she was working, she was at Stanford, you know, and, but uh, they used to choose to regularly visit. And uh, I, I was hoping that, uh, I mean, when this uh, I mean, we're, we're invitation was settled and I was to go and so on, I was hoping that uh, we would have uh, in interaction uh, to, to interact with her. At that time, it, her she had not proved any of the things that she la yes, la yes. later did. Correct. And uh, I, I had the results in a, in a baby yes, case, yes. That, uh, which... Uh, so if uh, I'm not uh, mistaken, she uh, was... SL2R. SL2 right, right, right. 
She was involved in central limit theorems at that time, right? During yeah, at that flows. time yeah, she yes. was in, uh, with other things. But her her work on I mean her uh, her cycle flows yes. in the general case the, it did have something related to that which I had not realized. I mean it was right. completely uh, sort of alien, uh, alien to me. So it's not. Uh, uh, but uh, as it turned out, she uh, took sabbatical that time, so I, I okay. couldn't really uh, interact with her except for she came, she visited once the department, and uh, so that that was. And the, uh, yeah, later in uh, 83, 84, uh, I had the occasion of meeting her, but again uh, the exchanges were not. I mean, the interaction was not. Uh, Elaborate or anything. It was so, so. I really did not have any long periods with her of discussion. On the other hand, uh, it's also not clear whether uh, I mean she had a different style of to work in doing. I mean it's so. Though I feel a loss that she was not there when uh, I left, but maybe it's uh, sort of mitigated. It's not. Uh, yes, yes. In in fact, uh, I think one of the people we mentioned earlier, Veach, yeah. famously has only. He's not written his paper with anybody at all, right? Yeah, 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 all his yeah, papers yeah, are single yeah. author. Yeah, uh, uh, this <laughs> no is a digression. But I, actually, I missed an opportunity. So uh, there was one paper which uh, of which he had offered me co-authorship because we had discussed it. I see. And uh, so he, after after he went back and worked on the details, he uh, uh, suggested that I, uh, that I should be a co-author. But somehow I I felt. That my contribution did not warrant my being a co-author, uh, co so uh, they missed two things. I missed having, having one paper in my CV and uh, which having which <laughs> having a paper to uh, Right.